it says I'm live. It says that the camera's working and that maybe this is working. I, I just deleted like three lives that didn't work because I don't know why. I'm really good at technology, as you can tell. I will wait for one second and double check that nobody's going to say, Hey, I still can't hear you because I am very thankful that you guys are so, um, willing to wait. <laughs> it's working. <gasps> yes. Okay, sound came on in an ad on my last video, apparently. I don't know what's going on. So I did so many weird things that my hair even fell down. I lost my clips. I don't know what was going on. <laughs> so welcome to the worst live video you've ever seen. But we're happy to be here together because I love you and you love me. <laughs> so uh, what you had missed on the first video, if you managed to catch the first one, and I was talking and nobody could hear me, I was just sort of explaining how I'm bad at doing live videos, <laughs> only I didn't think I was this bad. I was saying I'm bad at announcing them beforehand. I should have been like, hey, check in tomorrow at noon or something, right? And then people would have time to like plan to see me. But what happens is my kids and I'm dad isn't always home. So then the kids, I need to be available. I can't do a live video if they're running around screaming and fighting. Dad has to be here. And sometimes even when dad is here, they're not quiet enough. <laughs> so that's why my live videos are very impromptu spontaneous. I did go through the three second trouble of throwing my blanket up. I thought it might be a nice background. And then once the video started, I was using my computer before and it's really wide and it was showing like so much. At least this one is less wide. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. So that's what I was trying to say is that I suck at planning it and then it turned out that nobody could hear me so I ended it and I tried a new one and it wouldn't it wouldn't let me so I had to end that one and I tried a new one and then it still wasn't sound so I ended it again and I tried on my phone and it still wouldn't let me I don't know I don't know so I had to go back to my computer push some more buttons then go back to my phone push some more buttons and then I went live and it said that it was recording and I was live but there was just a black screen and I'm like, oh my goodness, like, people aren't going to wait forever, are they? But most of you have. I thank you for waiting. Um, you know, that's just, that's pretty much how my life goes, is I, things happen and I just have to go, well, that's the way it went. Yeah. So, thankfully, I am better at drawing than I am at figuring out YouTube. So, maybe you've seen the cats. Maybe you're excited because you know that the cats are done. I mean, it's only barely past the beginning of December and we're looking forward to the future because you're probably not done crocheting him, but I am and I have to get my testers time. So this has been happening. We're all excited. We're keeping it a secret. The tester's like, when can we tell? When can we tell? And I'm like, no, not yet, not yet. And then yesterday, okay, I also get my days confused. I'm pretty sure it was yesterday. I saw another designer post a picture of their theme for the year and I was like that's my theme that's my theme and it's not like they copied me and I didn't copy them clearly it's just we both thought people are gonna like this so hopefully we're both right hopefully we're both right and you guys are gonna like this now if you are new to me or to my monthly squares I'll go over a quick explanation I suppose I'm Ashley Bratzel. I suck at YouTube, but I am good at the pattern making. Well, I think I'm good. Am I allowed to say I'm good? You know, most artists, I do consider myself an artist, designer, small business owner, stay-at-home mom. And we do get into this kind of weird feeling where we're not really sure if we're actually good or if we're tricking people. Am I tricking you into thinking that I'm actually good at this? Like it's, I should know what it's called. I have a psych degree and it's a psych thing. And I forget what it's called when you're like falsely thinking <laughs> you falsely think that you suck and it's because if I can do it clearly it's easy and therefore I shouldn't be tricking people into buying my patterns it's kind of like this weird thing and then at the same time I know that I have to be confident and show you that I do know what I'm doing and you can trust my patterns so it's definitely a weird dichotomy so what I'm going to tell you is I yes that's the one imposter syndrome thank you yes if you've heard of it that's what I'm trying to say pretty much every designer I follow on Instagram at some point will admit that they have struggled with imposter syndrome and I'm telling you it's the weirdest thing 
I draw my stuff. I spend a lot of time figuring out, making sure that I like it. I say, okay, it's good. I like it. And then I publish it and I go, oh, it's not good. They're going to hate it. Oh my goodness. What am I doing? And then they like it. And I'm like, oh good. Oh no. I've tricked them into thinking that I know what I'm doing and I'm good at it. Oh no, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Until the next pattern comes out and then it all starts over again. So I don't know why that people are crazy and I'm crazy too. That is the real, real true announcement of today. People are crazy and I'm crazy too. Take that to the bank. Okay. Back to the squares and the patterns in general. When I draw them, I have a chart. I draw on the chart. And this one here is called interlocking crochet. And you can see, if this doesn't fall down on my head, it is two layers of mesh. So you can actually see like there's orange and there's black. And you don't have to cut the yarn and you crochet back and forth and you make the design because you're hiding the yarn or showing the yarn. You can use the same chart to crochet using the overlay mosaic crochet technique. So again, you're using one yarn at a time, there's no bobbins, and you just hide the yarn or show the yarn. So I have both techniques for all my patterns. And the squares, when you're doing interlocking, you get, you get a nice straight side that you can join. And we, it's not like a huge problem, but when you're doing mosaic, you get fringe at the end, which I did have, nope, it's not that one. It's this one, let me grab it. Okay, so you're crocheting back and forth and you get fringe because you cut your yarn. And in order to join this square, this was gnomes, that was the first time I did every month I came out with a new square. This one's cats, that was just this past year. They're the same chart size, but two different techniques. You choose your favorite. The problem with the mosaic one is these tassels because you've cut your yarn. Now you have to add an envelope border to hide them before you can join your squares, which isn't the end of the world, honestly. It's just more crocheting, which we like. We claim to like crocheting. That's why we do the patterns, right? Um, but it does make the blanket change shape and it's an extra step. So one of the things that I wanted to do for this year was kind of change it up a bit. So all of the overlay mosaic squares are made from the center out. And when you work from the center out, you don't cut your yarn. There's no tassels to cover up later. And your square is usually more square. Sometimes these can get a bit rectangular. <laughs> it depends on your tension. Technically, they're supposed to be squares. But some people get rectangles that are long and some people get rectangles that are wide, just depending on tension. So the center out version does solve that problem, or it should. I mean, you can still get a pretty wonky square if your tension's really bad, but usually it's a bit safer. So that is one of the biggest things about this year. This year, the center out version is only for overlay mosaic. This interlocking version doesn't need to be done from the center out to get a nice square. I mean, some people will still get stretched one way or the other way because of tension, but the trickiness of making it from the center out for crocheters and the really trickiness for me to draw it and make the chart and stuff, it just doesn't have the same reward. Therefore, I've decided to do regular squares for interlocking and center out squares for the mosaic version. So that's one of the biggest things. And when I first started, you can see like, because these are mesh, you kind of get like dots in the solid sections. When I first did the gnomes, there was dots in the solid sections because I used the exact same chart. And then I updated them and I took the dots out. So now the solid, sec the solid parts are solid and not dotted because they don't need to be. And there's also no extra border lines. You see there's just a single dark and these ones have dark, then light, then dark because it locks the two layers together. So when I adjust them, I take away the extra border lines and the dots. So this gnome squares has actually three options, the interlocking option, the mosaic option with all the dots all over it, and the mosaic option that's been adjusted to have solid. The cats never had a dotted mosaic option. It just didn't need to be there, so I never created it. Um, you know, as I grow and evolve, things change. So the cats just have the two options, solid mosaic or interlocking. And then this new year, 2023, is going to have your regular interlocking squares or a center out overlay mosaic with the solidness. There's no dots. And the other thing that changes when you take away those extra lines that go around the border is that this is two stitches smaller on every side. So depending on your tension, could make it smaller. I prefer to use a tighter hook when I use these and then this one looser. So it actually makes them the same size anyways, but that is a very individual thing that you'll have to play with. 
as long as you're doing the same thing for all 12 squares, they will match, they will join up. So it's not like a sweater where you have to meet gauge. Like you can be a little forgiving of yourself. So um, my kids are waiting. So I had all this weird computer stuff and now the kids are still waiting. So I'm going to get to the point. The point is really, I know everyone's excited. They've been guessing what is next year going to bring. And I had a lot of guesses on dogs, cats, dogs, right? And I, it's not dogs. It's not animals of any kind. And I know some of you are going to be sad. And I am sorry that I have to make some of you sad, but I'm hoping I will make up for it by having something that's still cool, having something that's, um, not that the cats aren't mature, but less, um, flamboyant. No, that's not, I don't know the the news, the new year is going to be more sophisticated. I don't know. Are you ready? I'm going to show it. No, this is just January square. I'm not showing all 12 squares yet. Each square will be a different design, which I could babble about Ravelry. They're kind of cuckoo too. They won't let me do things that I want, but there will be an ebook. Yes, I know, whimsical, that, that might work better. <laughs> These are very whimsical and fun. The gnomes also were quite whimsical and fun. And maybe that's what people see my art as. Like I think a lot of my designs probably are. I have kids and I like, I like fun. But I also like this. Are you ready? <gasps> Have you seen it? Is it there? The year of 2023, a year of Celtic knots. Now this is January and this knot is, I mean, Celtic knots are kind of ancient and there's many variations, but when you have the kind of like the rules are that they have to cross each other. So like this one goes, over this, under this, over this, under this, over this, under this. So it always alternates. And you can see that I have actually two strings or whatever, like the dark one and the light one. So they're interwoven. They don't end. The dark one just goes around and around and around. And then the light one goes around and around and around. And all of the designs follow those same rules. But not all of the designs have two. Some of them have more, some have less. But they're all kind of these interwoven knot type images and this the charts are still the same size so technically you could mix and match and there will be one ebook just like the cats and the gnomes there will be an ebook listing on etsy and on ravelry ravelry is preferred for me it's just a little easier but both options are good and you can buy the ebook now i mean not now because It'll be not until January. Um, I don't think that they're going to let me do a pre-sale. That's the part that I was trying to figure out if I could do some sort of a pre-sale. I don't think it's going to work for the pre-sale. So we might just have to wait and do it all at once. And, um, but I have a blog post that I'm going to publish real soon too. Push the buttons soon to make sure that everybody can see it. Cause not everyone wants to watch YouTube, but the, what was I saying? I got distracted. Someone was asking questions there and I was trying to finish my thought and I forgot. Oh, the eBooks. So like these other ones, you can buy each square individually. So if you bought one square like January knot, that's what I'm calling them. I didn't want to put Celtic knot into every title. I don't know if it's just some of my knots are not completely traditional. And like this one is, a very traditional looking Celtic knot. I think they call it a Dara knot. It's like represents strength and that sort of cool stuff. Some of them I took more liberties with how the things are woven. So I didn't want to call them all, you know, January Celtic knot, but the ebook is called 2023, a year of Celtic knots. And then each month, January knot, February knot, etc. And you could buy one square, make it 12 times and you'd have a blanket and it would be really cool to look at. You can buy the ebook and get 12 different squares and then you could mix and match or do one of each. It's up to you. It doesn't bother me. And that is, I don't think there'll be a pre-sale. I think you'll have to wait till January 1st. I will probably put it on sale at that point, but it won't be on sale every month. So just like we've done here where you can get it in January, the ebook, you pay once and every month you'll get an update. If you use Etsy, I have to email you. So Buying on Etsy allows me to save your email address and then every month I still email you the new stuff. 
And then at the end, in December, I'll send you one file with the ebook, and it'll have all 12 interlocking and then all 12 mosaic, all in one file each. So there's no um, all-in-one patterns this time. The cats, I had an all-in-one back and forth, up and down. But because these squares, just the difference of them, I'm not doing an all-in-one. So I just wanted you to know what you're going to get, right? And um, I don't have an interlocking square to show you the back of, but I did see the question, are they still reversible? They are, however, the wrong sides do look slightly wrong. Um, for example, in interlocking, when you have a straight line, like these two straight lines that go down, when you turn it over on the other side, you're going to have dashes. So it'll be chick, 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 chick. So you'll still get an image-ish, but it will be wrong, if that makes sense. Um, when I post the boat January, you'll get to see the back, and you can make a better decision there. Um, let's see, is there anything else? I can't actually see the rest of the comments. I don't think I missed much. I saw a bunch of like, yay, excitement, which is good to know. And mm, the cats are still here. The gnomes are still here. I, mean, I had a few questions about that last year. When we switched from doing gnomes to doing cats, some people were a little panicked. And they were like, oh, I didn't get all the gnomes yet. Are they still going to be available? And that's all of my patterns are on Ravelry and Etsy. I haven't taken any of them down. I haven't, I don't know what the word is, like put them into retirement or anything, they're going to be available. That was when I designed them and put them up there. That's kind of one of the selling points for me is that I make it once and I can sell it forever. So they are still available. All the cats, all the gnomes, you can get them. You don't have to keep up with us every month, although it is fun to see everyone's progress. I really like it. My preferred way of seeing it is my Facebook group, Ashley Bratzel Designs. It's where I'm most active, probably because Facebook notifies me all the time. <laughs> Technically, I have a TikTok and I'm not good at using it. I don't really understand the culture of it, I suppose. I'm not, I mean, it's just videos and I'm really not a video person. Clearly, my skills are not up there. You think I look young and really I'm just mom brain. I just don't have it all in me. So I have a TikTok. I do like Instagram. I just sort of post a picture or a quick video, try for once a day and then... That's about it. And then I check a few things, but mostly I try not to scroll Instagram or Facebook because I get distracted and I'm too busy to get distracted. I've got patterns to make, I've got children to feed, fights to break up, and every now and then I try to have a moment for myself. <laughs> Crazy idea, right? So I try not to scroll too much, but I do check on my Facebook group the most. I also have a Ravelry group. It's not really active at all, um, but you can feel free to post there. I do check it. Nobody says anything. And where else do I exist? Oh, here, YouTube. I think I'm on YouTube right now. <laughs> I do have a YouTube channel and I have all these videos and I make money now, which was pretty exciting. It's been a couple months now. I managed to reach enough subscribers and watch hours. So I've been making like 30 to $40 a month on YouTube, which is fun. Obviously you can't support your family with $40 a month. So I'm thankful that my pattern sales more than make up for that. Thank you everyone who likes them, shares them, talks about them. I can always tell when someone finishes like the double wedding rings, it's my most popular pattern. Someone will finish it or show their progress in a Facebook group, one that's not mine or sometimes mine, but I think I get more uh, explosions happening when it's some random group that I'm not in and they show, they show off their progress and people just like, oh, what this, oh, I love it. And suddenly I wake up and I'm like, oh, I've got three sales of double wedding rings today. Someone must have shared it, right? And that just is exciting because it's an older pattern. I think it's almost a year old now. And no, it can't be a year. I don't know what month it is half the time. I don't know what day it is. It's anyway, it's not brand new. Usually patterns, they have their peak sales when you come out with them. You've got like three or four days, maybe a week to get the sales in. And then people just sort of forget that the pattern exists for most patterns. So it's those three first days and you publish it and it's like on 20% off or whatever you put up. That's when you get the sales and people buy and then people sort of forget it exists. And every now and then people finish a blanket and you'll get a sale and you're like, yay, someone must have shared that. But double wedding rings, usually I get like three sales at a time when someone shares it. And that's pretty exciting for me. So I do have another design that is similar and I'm not sure if it's gonna be as popular 
but the concept of it where you can work from the center out and you keep going so like these knots they end it's just a square the double wedding rings and this new one that's not out i had hoped to get it out in november but obviously that didn't happen anyway you can keep going make it as big as you want and i think that might be part of the draw for the double wedding rings i'm not really sure so i guess it's my experiment so that's it um yeah i have quite a few things in the works always at the same time there was some teasers shown in my Facebook group of a dragon that's coming out and some of you had dress guessed dragon squares and I did try to draw dragon squares but they didn't really work so I'm happy here to go with the knots and um, hopefully it's good. I do plan on making some support videos for these knots on the center out version for just some of the different nuances that people can see how it's working and I do have tutorials on the technique, but maybe just to show it specifically for these squares might help. That's the plan. So I am happy to tell you that is the theme. This is who I am. This is what I do. Thank you for sticking with me because the start was so rocky and I do tend to babble. I try to stay on point and I forget sometimes, but I am very thankful to have you all here. I'm very thankful that I get to do art as my stay at home mom business <laughs> and yeah. I have, I love the comments. Thank you, Pat. Uh, I think that people are going to like it. I know that some people were hoping for more whimsy, but I will keep coming out with more whimsy as well. It's just that the year with the monthly squares is going to be the knots. So hopefully we please everyone or close to everyone. I am a bit of a people pleaser, but yeah. So I gotta go. I told my husband I was gonna make a 10 minute video and I spent 10 minutes figuring out all this stupid stuff and now I've been talking for 20, so the kids are probably ready. <laughs> it's bedtime and I need mommy. So thanks for watching. Thanks for being everything for me. You guys are awesome and I really, 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 really appreciate you. Really, really, really do. So bye guys.